What is up? First to the floor, playoffs are here. The Celtics haven't played a meaningful basketball game in what feels like 24 years. I'm joined by Wayne Spoony, but we got a special guest. Barstool, Dan Greenberg. Greeny, how you doing, friend? I'm nervous as shit. I'm anxious, <laughs> nervous. I feel like we're all in the same boat at, at this yeah. moment in time. Spoony, we got these doing? bums, dude. We got that. So I'm... Uh, Check it out tomorrow on Celtics blog. Got a series preview coming up. Uh, I watched a lot of the Heat Celtics game, the most recent one where Jimmy Butler did not play. So yes. I feel like it makes a lot of sense to focus on that one. They are, we got them. It's fine. Did you see <laughs> how they played against I'm not Philly? Doing this again. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Can't <laughs> keep happening, Greeny. I'm not yeah. doing it. I'm, listen, in a year as important as this, I am True. respecting the opponent, I am respecting yeah. the basketball gods. I have seen Miami counted out and go into Boston and the Celtics shoot 20% in the first quarter and they can't stop Tyler Harrow. I've seen it. I'm yep. not doing it. This is too important. <laughs> it's too important. Respect them. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm with Spoonie. It's like objectively, analytically, I understand there's a reason the Heat are like 17 to 1 underdogs to win the series. I, I, I get that. But... This episode, this time last year, Greeny was on. We were previewing the Hawks series, and I, I was like, know "What I said? I don't even." No, want no, to know you, no, you, you, you were, you were similar to this. You were like, "I'm just taking it one win at a time." And like going into the year previous, like the 22 finals run, I was insanely mm-hmm. confident. And then coming back to the last year, I was very confident. I've, I, I've learned my lesson as far as just like, just I'm just taking everything one game at a time. Like, yeah. I, I, I do think that the team has probably learned their lesson as well. Like, they, like Tatum has specifically mentioned the Hawks series as, like, maybe taking things for granted, trying to get back to the finals, and not skipping steps this year. So, like, I think everyone's going to be in the same boat where it's like, I don't care who's playing for the Heat. It almost doesn't feel like they matter. it matters. Mm-hmm. This is the, um, the, of the three games we played against the Heat, we won all three. Ironically, though, the, the Tyler Hero game with no Jimmy Butler was the closest of the three games, Spoonie. Yeah. Yeah, good. That's what we want. <laughs> we want the Heat thinking they can, they're positive and they can beat us without Jimmy Butler. So I don't know. Just, like, you just know, you know, Jovic is going to like come in and yeah. go like six or 10 from three in game one. <laughs> yeah. You just have to understand that, like, and I did the same thing, right? I look back, I'm like, damn. Celts put up 124 a night, over 50 from the field. Every every player was like over 50, 60 percent shooting. I just you can't you can't put stock into it. You have to understand that you know there's this heightened. How many times have we seen this? I mean, we should we saw it in Game Seven, right? We have all this momentum. We're feeling great. The Garden's juice, and they can't make a shot to save their life. Things start to get out of hand. You get tense. I just, you know, I'm cautiously optimistic, right? Like there's the basketball side, it should be fine. The matchup problems, they haven't shown any signs of having an answer for Porzingis. Like logic, I'd be with you, Spoonie, but this is dark magic that we are dealing with. It's not a normal situation. Yeah, absolutely. Like analytically, like the whatever the I don't have a big chunk of my brain that's smart, but the smart part of my brain is telling me like, you know, this team should win. But like we've gone through the Caleb Martin thing. He shoots 35% from three on the season, which uh, after shooting 50% in the conference finals, which just is so painful. But okay, so this is, I looked it up. This is the Tetrology, not the trilogy. This is the, the fourth time. The Celtics are playing the Heat. The, the Tetralogy. <laughs> that's um, what it's called. That's what it's called. All according right. to, to apparently, it just gets called the series usually after you get past the third <laughs> thing. But we're calling it the Tetralogy. Um, I think the question I want to ask, like, do we, do we see Jimmy Butler? Because my brain is just like Embiid's fine. Giannis is going to be back, and Jimmy Butler is going to be fine. Mm-hmm. I know he's been ruled out for tomorrow's game specifically. But Greeny, do you think that we see Jimmy in this series? Yes, they are the zombie. <laughs> yeah. you, you can't kill him, okay? He's going to play. That's why it's important that you don't drop these first two games at home. Because I think there's, what, two or three game, two or three days yep. in between each? So it's like, is it inconceivable that he's back game four? Like, I mean, who the hell knows? Maybe they just inject his knee with God knows what. 
you know, some Pat Riley blood or something. That <laughs> it's I don't know. That's another thing. I'm not ruling that out. I'm not ruling, you know, I just think it's, it would be silly to think, oh, he's not going to play. They're not going to be able to score a hundred points and you're going to cakewalk. Right. Like if you look at this matchup, Tyler Harrow's gotten whatever he's wanted in all three of these games, over 24 a game, Decent, you know, respectable percentages. Mm -hmm. Obviously, things will be different now that he's the sole focus, and you could really, you know, take that away. But I just, you know, there was only that one blowout in these three games, right? Like the Celtics on two occasions had to execute late down the stretch. Why wouldn't I think that that's going to have to be the case, you know, this year? If they come out and they hit 10 threes in the first quarter and we can all exhale, like that would be great. But I think it's more realistic that, we're at a six to eight point game with four minutes to go, and you gotta you gotta close it out. Yeah, I, I think uh, we'll see, but I, I feel like Butler is like the target's probably like game four, if I had to guess. And if it's three zero Celtics, he's not gonna play. Mm -hmm. But if we drop one of these first three games, we're gonna see Jimmy Butler. Yeah. And I don't know, like Butler on one leg or how hurt he is. Like I'm not sure how beneficial he's going to be for the heat, but I think mentally for the teammates and for the Celtics, it will probably have an impact in that way. Plus, you know, he's going to grift his way to like 12 yeah. free throws on one leg. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. That's what Jimmy mm -hmm. Butler does. So I, I hope we don't see him. Cause I think that will mean it's three Oh Celtics and they're just like, screw it. Let's just pack it in. It's over. Um, but yeah, it, it look the black, it just got to end at some point, right? Like it just, I, they can't, yeah, you agree with that, right? like, like, is this, totally. the, is this the Sox getting over the Yankees, the Patriots getting over, uh, the Ravens, you know, the 08 Celtics getting past the Pistons, you know, they have that history where it's like, okay, you know, at some point you have to overcome the boogeyman. Right. And I, we all thought that that happened in 2022, right? Like yeah. you go in there and you win game seven, you're thinking, okay, the dragon is slayed. And that was not <laughs> the case, which is why I'm entering this series thinking, yep. you know, it's just as likely that we're in for another seven game series. And I know that there's nothing that supports that other than just our own life experience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like outside of the devil magic, uh, the PTSD, if we look at like, the actual basketball stuff. So obviously there's no no Jimmy Butler. The the Heat have struggled to really I mean they they got going in that Bulls game, but even in that first half, like if Chicago had been able to hit, like they missed so many wide open threes. I I've never seen so many threes go in and out. And again, yeah, that that feeling of the devil magic is coming. But in that Sixers game, the only way they were able to generate offense was by Sixers turnovers. So and I agree. I'll throw it to you. If I had to choose one, like a team, a team factor, a team aspect of the matchup going in, is there one thing you're like, if they can control this, that's going to be really impactful. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, it's turnovers and points yeah. off turnovers easily. Right. If you look at every single game of these, you know, last four playoffs, I bet you over 15 turnovers, the Celtics never win under 14 turnovers. I would imagine They've either never lost or only lost once or twice, you know, because the Heat's offense, like you said, it's it relies on the the chaos, the transition, the the points off turnovers. Because if you force them to beat you in the half court, that's just not how they they can you know maybe go on stretches. But just like we saw in the third quarter, I don't know if it was the second or third quarter against the Bulls, where like they scored eleven points in nine minutes of the second yep. quarter or whatever. All the Bulls had to do was hit an open three, and they couldn't do it. So when you play the Heat, it comes down to two things. Keeping your turnovers low and making your open threes when they go zone, and you break the zone and you swing the ball. If you can make your open threes and you take care of the ball, they just can't generate enough points to stay with you if you're not giving away 20 to 25 points a night through turnovers. Yeah, for me, it's the matchup of the Celtics offense versus the Heat defense, because you're right. That's how they fuel their offense is on the defensive side of the ball. Um, and if you score and make the Heat take the ball out of the basket and run their half court offense, you are going to win that game probably by a lot. That's like we saw most of the Celtics wins against the Heat in the playoffs mm. are blowouts. And then the Heat mm. scrape by with like, you know, a couple point wins or steal it in the fourth quarter, things like that. Um, so. Mm. The Heat have a legitimately great defense. I think they're a fourth fifth. or fifth, I think it was fifth yeah, for day. cleaning the glass. Yep. There, I think, uh, caused the fourth most turnovers uh, as a defense. So 
that's that's definitely the big thing. But the Celtics with especially I think KP is by far the most important Celtic for this series because he is the key to unlocking that Miami defense. When they go that junk three two zone, um, get it to him on, you know, either isolate, run pick and roll, pick and pops with KP, or get it to him at the nail. They have to, you know, they have to send so much help to him at the nail because nobody on that team can guard him one on one in the high post. And then he just picks out shooters. And that's how the Celtics can get them out of the zone. Then they're playing man. Then you just find Tyler Hero. Uh, and, and you make them like switch. That. And once you switch with yeah. Porzingis, they're dead. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, that's it. That we're going to, so much of this series and pretty much every series they'll probably play is who's going to handle the seven foot two unicorn. Right. Because if you have to dedicate too much attention to him, well, now you're getting killed by your two all NBA wings. So it's like he, his health, obviously we've been saying it since they traded for him. He is the one that unlocks everything, right? If you can't, if you can't go zone against this team and you can't switch against this team, how do you defend them? And those are the only things that he can do to, to keep it close. Yeah. It is funny. Like we traded for Pozingas, Brad traded for Pozingas because he knew he was going to be good overall, but like, because we had just lost to Miami, Miami, right? In like that first sit down interview, Brad's like, Yeah, I tweeted really, it out. Yeah, like, yeah, I know. Yeah, he tweeted it out. The only thing to talk about. He's like, And by the way, we played Miami and <laughs> they just kicked our ass. It's like, Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure if you've noticed. We play Miami every year. So we yeah. may as well bring in the guy that should solve both the zone and the switching defense that has given the Jays like so many issues because that's the thing, right? Bam is one of the best defenders in the NBA. When he's allowed to switch on to whoever, the Jays, then he just causes them so many problems. He causes everybody, I don't care which star player it is, he gives them problems. But that means if he's not guarding, if he's guarding the Jays, I don't care who else is guarding Porzingis. It could be, their next big is Kevin Love. Who's, who's, it's Kevin Love, who's right? Who's good though. He's, look, I, again, talking about respecting your opponent, he was huge in um, the last Sixers game in the regular season. He was like more impactful than Bam in the Sixers game as well. Like, because he stretches the floor. Um, yeah, but he, like if he's on Porzingis, at this stage of Carolina's career, I am very uh, comfortable with that. So the turnovers is is definitely the number one thing, and yeah, and getting those shots on goal because like even if you're getting threes, as as long as you're getting threes, and the reason we shoot so many threes, part of that is like you're able to set your defense. Even if you're missing those shots, if you're taking threes, it's so much easier to get yeah. back. So getting shots on goal, not turning the ball over, and then offensive rebounds. Mm-hmm. Like it's not something that the Heat have been really good at, but they were really good at it against the Sixers. The Sixers are bad at rebounding. The Celtics were seventh in defensive rebounding on the season. It fell off from like Mm. February on. I do think that was just kind of the season was like the the defense and the rebounding were 12 games up on the East. Yeah. Yeah. Like I believe in this team's ability to rebound. Like Jason Tatum, when he gets to the playoffs, turns into one of the best rebounders in like at his position in the NBA. So I do think they're going to be locked in from that perspective. So rebounding would be the other thing. Yeah, their rebounding is weird because it's like their defense is so good that they force so many misses that their offensive rebound percent, like that stuff is high. So it's like, man, they're at like the bottom of the league in offensive rebounding, but they're number one in the league in total rebounding. It's like, well, yeah, because they're mi- they're forcing so many misses. And you got to think the Heat are looking at this like, I'm envisioning their approach is going to try to be, let's recreate last year's Eastern Conference Finals we need to match the Celtics on our three-point volume, and they're going to live with the results, right? They need Tyler Hero to make three, four, five threes. They need Duncan Robinson to be taking eight, nine, ten threes because the Celtics are going to shoot them because of the, the zone defense, right? Like, you're going to see a lot of pump it into Porzingis. They're going to collapse. He's going to swing it. There's going to be one pass, and, you know, it's going to be a catch-and-shoot three. So that's why I'm just thinking – if this is a game where you get Miami hot to start, the Celtics are maybe slow to make a basket to begin the game. Like those are just the type of black voodoo magic things that we are used to, where it's going to come down to if you're forcing all of these misses, right. But you're, then you're giving up offensive rebounds, right. We saw it in all of their losses to end the season against the Hawks against yep. the Knicks. They were giving up 15, 16, 17 offensive rebounds. You're just asking for a prayer, Caleb Martin, second chance three that's contested that he makes and he's going like this in your face. Oh, I hate that celebration. Oh. Just avoid it. 
Yeah, dude, it's all about the possession battle because that's the Heat can't keep up with the Celtics, Celtics offense if we just like straight up one shot per one shot. They need to generate more looks than the Celtics do in order to keep up with their offense. But they're freaking good at doing that, which is yes. what's annoying about them because it feels fake, but it's very real. They've been doing it since Jimmy Butler got there. They've been doing it for the last five years when we played them in the playoffs. So if they take care, if the Celtics take care of the defensive glass and the Heat are so big on taking away the initial like early first read that yep. first pass where it's like, Oh, there's my escape valve right there. I know it's always wide open. The heat do not give that to you. They <laughs> like abandon the weak side defensively. So you need to like read that quick and make that like cross court pass to the open shooter in the corner every single time. And that's, what's tough because your muscle memory is not to make that pass. It's like, okay, here's the quick swing. Oh, I'll hit the guy in the pop or, you know, I'll dump it down. But th those aren't there against the Heat, and that's why they just play defense differently yeah. than every other team. But the, that corner shot is there. It's yeah. wide the yeah. bucket open against the Heat. And the biggest, that pass. The, the biggest difference will now be, can Jalen figure it out? Yeah. There you go. Yep. Here's the, if that first initial read's not going to be there, you know, how many times last series did we see him try to beat his man, drive into traffic. Like if he's going to be able to understand how the defense is going to rotate and where his reads are going to be, and he can keep his turnovers low, then I think we'll all feel a lot better. I just think there's that, there's that just unknown. We have to see it. We, you know, he talked about, you know, learning from it and getting better mm -hmm. and all that shit. And he was great during the year. Well, everybody always knew it. The only thing that mattered about his season was how he played once they eventually faced Miami and while there's no Jimmy Butler, like Caleb Martin was able to guard him and cause turnovers. You know, I don't think, you know, Terry Rozier or whoever is the same sort of pesky defender that Lowry was. But like, it's not going to shock me if he pokes the ball loose here or there, just because that's how things tend to go. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's a great call. Eric Weiss in the chat, the post-ups, something that they did a lot of through the first like half, two thirds, two thirds of the season felt like they kind of put it back in their back pocket and we're like, okay. And that's like something that I don't, don't know why we weren't doing it with Jalen before, but when you talk about turnovers, when he's posted up on the baseline, that's Ooh. just so much easier for him to not turn the ball over. And he's become so effective down there, whether it's the, the fadeaway or he just like takes these powerful dribbles and then goes to like the left or right hand with these little floaters. That is definitely something that he did not have and not something that he focused on in last year's playoffs. Ooh. There's just um, something we got to hit quickly here um, from Ben in the chat watching from home. So we always lose when ex Celtic stars are in attendance. If I agree. Been. And so we have, I'm not sure if everyone's seen, I've got, mm. I've got the clip here um, from the big four are all together at the moment. This force took the court a lot. We, I mean, we bro, play big. Bro, we play I'm going to say it out loud. We were fucking shit up. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> That's right. I said it. Which is, objectively awesome i think yes. i found my new um playoff battle cry before every game or after every win is like just chief saying we're fucking shit up so love that Hell yeah <laughs> but yeah i mean like the ones that come to mind like the kg retirement uh i know like jalen when they're playing the mavs jalen dunks on maxi cleaver high fives kg in the crowd they lose yeah. to a luka Doncic game winner i'm blanking on the other ones at the top uh, of my Pierce's, head. Pierce's, they lost by, yeah. Le LeBron blew him out by like 30. That's on right. His, yep. On his jersey retirement. I'm with you. I think everyone's always like, oh, Larry Burns got to come back. No. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> never. Like, like, watch it on TV. Don't even <laughs> let his ass in Connecticut. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm anti. Like, it'd be cool. He'd get a huge, you know, pop on sure. the crowd. But like, I can't remember the last time they won a huge game when all the legends were back in the building. So This is why this season's different, though. All yeah, right? We're playing right. the Heat in round one. We're going to cut off the head of the Devil Magic. Larry Bird has, like, left French lick and come to Boston since for the first time since he's retired, I'm pretty sure. I want to so, know what, his, what was his appearance fee to get him to come. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I haven't yeah, been yeah. able to get him in the city in 40 years, and here he is at Dick's Sporting Good. I know, right? This is a good point from RJ. Maybe we should invite Patino to the arena. That we, we no, do that. Uh, reverse well, jigs. Yeah, do the like reverse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. All right. So um, defensive game plan, initial matchups. I know in the Discord, people were kind of playing around with who we wanted certain players. Like, So Rosier is out for tomorrow. Okay. And Jimmy Butler's out for tomorrow. And Cornette is out for tomorrow for with a oh, calf no, thing, which fucked. I didn't. I mean, that, I'm considering Whoa. him out for, I don't think we're anyway. going to 
Well, right. like, I mean, a, a strained calf, that's yeah. the, that's the Giannis injury, and his was two weeks, so. Yeah, so, yeah, I agree, which is a bummer, because it'd be nice to have him just in case someone gets into foul trouble, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but then we have Tillman. But so, and kind of, you know, top eight guys, initial game plan. Um, I'm a D. White on hero guy. I know Jalen has been the guy taking a lot of these matchups. I wonder if we do see that just because of like yeah. wanting to set the Probably tone doing. early. Yeah. But D. White is because like Tyler Hero doesn't really create in isolation. That's not really something he's really capable of, capable of. But he's awesome in the pick and roll. And Derek's just so, like he's the best screen navigator on the the team. Well, that's uh, going to be yeah. the thing, right? I don't think it's going to be come down to who's guarding Hero. It's going to be. Yes. How do the Celtics handle Bam's moving screens to get around him? Because that's how Hero gets into the paint. That's how he comes off curls into his pull-up three. So it's like, I think you're going to see Drew and him interchange. It's just going to be, you know, who who's having a better, you know, who's executing the screen navigation better. I'm still nervous over Drew's shoulder. I don't think we've really seen him fight over screens mm-hmm. like he was pre-injury. And we know what Bam is going to do. So I just, you know... I'm nervous of that. I have a crazy idea. All right. The Jays on Hero and Bam, because their offense is going to be Bam, Hero, pick and roll, handoff Mm. game. Like those two are awesome Mm. at it, man. They have really good chemistry. So when they run that, you can just switch it every time because both Jays can handle Bam in isolation and they can handle Hero in isolation. And it's like, then where do you go if they shut that down with the switch game? And yeah. KP's roaming off, you know, whoever Jovic or whoever, you know, their fifth starter helping at the rim. So I, I think like that. I like that idea. As long as you're going to switch ha- it. Yeah. Yeah. If you switch it every time and it stops you from having to get over the top on the BAM illegal mm. screens that he sets a hundred of of a game. And you don't have to worry about trying to contest Hero on like rear view contests and stuff like that. Because that that doesn't really bother him. Like if he gets to his spot, he's probably going to mm. make the shot. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a great idea, Spoon. I hadn't, I hadn't thought of that because I've I've just been like, you kind of you want KP near the rim, and they have they have shooters, but you can. I, I even hesitate to say it. you can put him on Caleb Martin. Who, you know he's he's not know, the most know, willing Caleb shooter. Martin. You should. No, yeah, we're, we're not doing it. Yeah, I know. I know. Next, Caleb Martin. Okay? Yeah. So so not, that, that, but that's what I'm saying. So but but then like you know so hero. I mean and then Duncan Robinson, who's questionable, but I'm, I'm guessing he played. He played in the Bulls game. Mm-hmm. It becomes tricky of like where do you put KP right? Because I he can kind of hang with Caleb Martin and stuff, but he the reason he's been excellent on defense and why the Celtics defense has been great is because he's been one of the best rim protectors in the NBA. So like, I think maybe you hold the Jays on Bam and Hero as like a, in your back pocket, maybe for the fourth quarter or for like later in the series. I do think you just want to go straight, play your drop coverage and let Derek White and Jalen kind of go at Tyler Hero on both ends, but specifically, you know, trying to get around those screens. Um, so can I just, can I just say real quick, my mom, UMass alumni, did not get that the Rick Pitino thing was us hating on him. <laughs> yeah. Rick Pitino, go UMass. Yes, thank you, mom. Anyway, go ahead, Jake. Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know. Any, any other things like from a defensive matchup perspective you guys want to hit? Oh, as I'll move to uh, next thing. Now, do you th- do you think that Missoula stays with his Tatum coming out at six minutes? Like, do you think we'll see the same type of minute split, rotation split, where it's you know, Tatum and Drew out first, and then they close the first quarter with the, you know, the Jays and the Whites. I mean, it's it's usually how they've they've staggered those minutes. But then again, I, you know, does it depend on what Spolster does, right? Like, do you think they try to? I guess my question is more: Do you think Joe forces Spo to adjust to him, or do you think we see them play differently than what we saw all all year? Yeah, I I think without Butler, that decision to just go with your normal rotate normalish rotation, obviously going to stretch guys for longer minutes in the playoffs. But I think that's a lot easier decision to make because Butler is the mismatch killer, right? Like if Pritchard's out there or Hauser's out there, I don't really trust either of those guys on Jimmy Butler. But obviously, if he's not playing, I feel a lot more comfortable just saying like, go out there, juice the offense, kill their bench. So I I actually do at least for game one think he'll probably stick to his kind of standard mm-hmm. drew and um drew and tatum out early and get either like hauser and horford in there and then let you know 
Tatum, Drew, and the white dudes get out there and just kind of score 30 in seven minutes mm-hmm. or whatever crazy shit they can try to do against this heat zone. Now, do they do they start Bam and Love or Love comes off the bench? Bon- Love typically comes off the bench. Okay. So I was going to say bitch recently. Y- Jovic has been starting for them. Yeah. yeah. So that so his size doesn't warrant double bigs for you, right? What would you do if they have minutes of of Love and Bam? Do you stay? Do you stay one solo big? Do you maybe give you? Do you maybe unleash some Porzingis Al minutes in those lineups? I think we'll, we'll go. We'll definitely see Al Porzingis lineups. That's been a really good lineup and something that Joe went to a lot more later in the season. Like the minutes for that, I think partly ticked up a lot because we were resting guys, and so mm-hmm. there was just a guy out, so we ended up being in that a bit more. But I love that lineup, and I have been someone that's like, I I wonder if in some scenarios that's actually going to be our best five. Like you just have so much size, and Horford on this like retirement youth like generation program that he's been on has just looked so good all year long and i trust so him to be able to sit? so who do you sit well that's the <laughs> i mean it's, it's true is the answer but like I, I, is is joe gonna be willing to go with the with the hot hand or like if jalen's having a turnover problem so you go double bigs and you put drew in there instead like that could be something that ends up happening politically i can see how that is tough but i i do think that like you know, like the sacrifice thing has been something they've talked about all year it looks like it's going to impact them all from an awards perspective as well, um, which I mean, that's the truth <laughs> has been crazy. Which I think, which I think feeds yeah. into everything though, and it feeds into them being willing to to be okay with those sorts of decisions. Mm. I think we'll see it. Um, yeah, I'm sure Spo will go to that to that double big lineup. I do think it's a Pritchard series now that Jimmy's out. Like I was like Pritchard can play in the playoffs. There's two matchups I don't like him in. It's the Heat matchup. He can't play if Jimmy Butler's on the court. Mm-hmm. And you can't. He basically can't play in the Nuggets series because Jamal Murray is so good. Just at, him, right? And then Jokic yeah. is out there just doing the same thing. So, um, I. But now, like you talk about not turning the ball over and creating space, create spacing, and like he, like Hero can shoot over the top of him, but he can hang, get around screens and stuff. I think this is actually a legit Pritchard series, which is great news. I'd love to know. I forgot to look it up, but I'd love to know. I know his percentages were good. I can't remember. Hold on, I want to see. I'm going to check my. Because I bet you in their three games, I bet you he was very effective. Let me see. Uh, not really. Seven points a game, but he shot 61% from the floor and 57% from three. So, you know, not a ton of, of volume, but he was efficient. So given the way he's been playing, I would hope it would be a Pritchard series because who who on the other end is staying in front of him, uh, you know, defensively? I think you're going to be able to see him – if they aren't, you know, if they aren't in zone in his minutes, which why would you be? Because they'll just put him off ball and now he's a, you know, 57% shooter getting open looks. So if he's able to get into the paint and there's no Jimmy Butler there to, you know, roam, I don't know. I think it could be a big Pritchard sort of pulling his Nash dribble craziness uh, and being infected mm-hmm. that way. But it's going to come down to the, the shooters. Got to make your open threes. No turnovers. Make your open threes, and it'll be a quick series. Yeah, for sure. And if Pritchard's going against that bench, bench when Bam is out, uh, when he like we're on offense too, like Kevin Love has to play drop. There's nothing he can do, mm-hmm. and Pritchard can crush drop coverage with his pull up shooting. And then if Love comes up to like the level of the screen, I now trust Pritchard to get downhill yeah, and either make a play or finish at the rim too, which is not something you could really say for the rest of his career. So. Definitely a PP series. I want to see a big veiny PP all <laughs> series going, long, dude. just it's crushing time. the Miami Heat. Yeah, <laughs> hey, he's been good. He's been good in round one before. I think yeah. it would be great. And he's man, he was so good. Just like March and April, that's Pritchard's time. And it definitely felt like he he took a real leap this year, kind of across the board. Like the playmaking stuff was not something that he had before. And so if he can create some advantages and then spray out to the rest of these guys, like. Yeah, get that PP spraying out, and we'll be we'll, we'll be feel, we'll be feeling good. All right, um, we're gonna we'll hit the hit the ad rate here, and we'll we'll hit some more broader playoff stuff. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than three million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. March is over, but the biggest moments of college basketball tip off in the month of April. Be a part of the action on Prize Picks for both men 
men's and women's college basketball and get in on the playoff action went up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason you can even make the play-in rounds like seem interesting since we all know the celtics won't be there quick withdrawals easy gameplay and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what make prize picks the number one fantasy sports app personally i'm looking at Derek white more on points because they are criminally low and we all know Derek white is going to come up big in the postseason so download the app today and use code clns for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars download the app today and use code clns for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars all right is there anything else on the heat series like my only other question was going to be like how do the heat extend it but we i feel like we know we, we, we touched on it, right? If it's the, you don't yeah. take ter- care of the possession battle, the turnovers, mm. and 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 look, and if they fucking shoot 44% from three again and we shoot below 30%, then that's going to even the battle. We are far more equipped this year than last year to handle the shooting variance, which has been nice. So, like you so let, me ask you, let me ask you both yeah. this. On, on what level, what percentage, I mean – we're kind of, the big question for the two offseason acquisitions were can Drew beat his playoff dropper reputation? Mm-hmm. And what does Porzingis look like in a series that actually has some juice, right? Like we we haven't seen these guys perform as Celtics on this stage. The last three years, in terms of true shooting percentage, Drew Holiday was like under 50%. Like that's he has to, in my opinion, right? If you look at last year or the last three postseasons, Smart was never under 59% true shooting percentage, and nobody wanted him shooting. So for me, that's sort of the bar. But we like we haven't seen Holiday be anywhere close to that, albeit an entirely different role. So factoring that in, I think him and KP are just as much of a question mark in this series because we sort of know how – the Jays are going to respond to Miami because we've seen them do it so many times. We know, so many times. Right. We know what Horford is going to be like, but those two, we have no idea. And I think that is going to be my, my biggest concern for the entire playoff run until we see it. Because if he throws up a 41% true shooting percentage, even as the fifth option, that's going to be a problem because, you know, it was a problem for my, for Milwaukee. It's going to be a problem for you. Yeah, I, I think efficiency is such a different thing when you're basically the primary ball handler for a team that kind of like Milwaukee outside of like Giannis is not a great offensive team, even like in some of their years where they were better than they. I mean, this year they're an amazing offensive team, but it's basically because of Damon Giannis and like Drew's obviously not as good as an offensive player as even this version of Dame is. So I think what he he's way overstretched as your second option, but with this Celtics team, he can basically like occasionally run a pick and roll, occasionally like post up a mismatch, and then he's basically just shooting corner threes. And like, if the dude's just gonna miss wide open corner threes, which he might, because you're right, Greeny, he has missed open shots in the playoffs like a lot. Yeah. Um, but I think his job is so much easier on the Celtics team that I anticipate his efficiency will be just fine. I think to me, KP is even the bigger question mark just because we ask so much more of him on the offensive end. Um, And like we saw him kind of struggle with like the refs, I guess, just in March 1st. We're like, okay, we're calling it like the playoffs for the rest of the season. And he did have some games, especially when he was coming back from injury where he didn't look great. And a lot of his like highly efficient games after that were when the three was going down. Um, which is going to be important, but we want to see him get back to like the unbeatable post-up player. That's what we need from him. And I think there's a big question mark whether he's going to be able to bring that into the playoffs, but I think he's up for it, dude. I really do. Yeah, it's, it's more just like, you know, I'm more I'm more weary of like, okay, it's the first time, it's the first game that it's the first time in the garden. They're so over-amped. Oh, yeah. Now you have a 2 of 10 start. And you're down six at the half. Like, though, not that it's going to be like, oh, my God, they might never show up. It's more just going to be, I don't think you can give the Heat a sliver of life. Because you give them a sliver, <laughs> that's how they steal a game. Then they steal game one, you're, you're pressing in game two, and maybe you go cold. And now you're going down to Miami with your series. And, you know what I mean? It's like. Those are kind of the neurotic worries I have at three in the morning when I can't sleep. Of course. And I'm just, it's just like, 
what could possibly, if I had to envision what could go wrong, it's he's not getting the the jump shooting foul on his, you know, turn and face jump shot in the paint. You know, Love's going to be there with his hands up. There's going to be contact, and that's not going to be a foul. He's going to then get struggling. Then he'll maybe start settling for 35-foot threes. That'll be short. Like, there are ways where we've seen, you know, them sort of disappear at times. This is now, it's like, you can't do it now. Like, we are yeah. at the point of the season, like, this is why yeah. we traded for you both. You have to, you know, you have to come through. So, yeah, those are the two guys with question marks, at least on this specific team. With, with Drew, I, I mean, look, he, he won a title. Like, he went through the battles. Like, he was, he, they picked him for the Team USA again. Like, he has the mental fortitude to handle struggles. Like, he went through it efficiency-wise in that Bucks finals playoff run. Ended up coming up huge in both the Hawks and um, mm. Hawks and Sun series. I just went and looked back at the last two years of catch-and-shoot three-point percentage for Drew Holiday because I think that's what you want to look at. So, yeah. last year, he was at 31%. Obviously, Not- a small... Of, but... Not good. They played Not five good. games. They played five games. Five games. games. Okay. The, year, the, the year before he was 41, he was 40.7%. Okay. Very much, that, much better. Much better. So that's all that that's matters. Much, better. That's better, right? And then and then if I look at the finals run, um, he was uh, 31.5%. Not great. Um, catch and shoot threes. We're due for a good season. It's every other season. Yeah. Last exactly, year was right? terrible, so we're good. Yeah. Well, that's but I, but the, 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 Yeah. <laughs> I would say the key here is though, like the the volume is at like two per game on the Bucks. So I'm just looking at the last three years. Like he just wasn't really taking them versus like they're all of his shots this year. So I'm like he like you talk about reps and RJ in the chat here was like was Drew Holiday focusing on his corner three like he was this season? Like that's what he's become. That he's his specialty now. Like. We don't need him to shoot 60% from the corners. If he does, we, we will probably cakewalk to the finals. But, like, right. can he just be in the high 30s and that's going to be everything? Right. And, I mean, listen, it's it comes down to the fact of the matter is they brought him in as the upgrade over Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart was a playoff riser. He has to show us that he can be that better option, better ball security, better late-game decision-making, you know, no turnovers, hitting your open threes. Like, these are the things he's done all year. The only thing that's been the, the question for him is what we said when they traded for him is when they get to the playoffs, his offense literally craters like no, like nothing you've ever seen. And all year we said a different role is going to mean a different result. Well, you know, here we go. It has been so far. Um, so that so that is good. And I think we are more equipped to handle that. So, Okay. Uh, this is and this is uh, what you're saying is true of not just this heat series but the whole playoff run as a whole. So, this is a question for the whole playoffs. Um, let's say so the the red hour back genie comes to you tonight. This is the night before the Celtics playoff run. The barstool genie, uh, could, we we could say uh, as well. So he comes to you. There's there's five. You know there's six main Celtics. I'm going to give you six options here. You can guarantee one of these things happen and that's okay. going to be the re- like the most impactful thing for the Celtics playoff run. Okay. So, t- so Tatum maintains his shooting splits from the regular season, 60.5%, you no know, true shooting. Jalen averages 2.2 turnovers per game. So these are like realistic. Yeah. He was at like 3.1 in last year's playoff run. Okay. Drew holiday has a true shooting of 58% or above. KP hits his two year post up points per possession average. So between the Wizards season and this season, 1.24 points per possession is what he's averaging across two full seasons, which is absurd. Al Horford hits his career three-point percentage, which is 39.6. Incredible. And Derek White just is Derek White is aggressive. Aggressive Derek White. I don't have a number for Derek White because I don't think it matters. I just need Derek White being like the guy who believes he can take over. You know it when you see it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right, so which which is the most like – indicative of their success or whatever you want you know like that's what's going to help you sleep better tonight knowing one of those things is going to happen uh it's it's tatum it's his efficiency uh i think once you get to this time of year to win a title your best player has to go supernova that's you can have all the you know the one through six one through eight go down the list for the team to win the title the best player has to be the best player in the world 
Jokic did it. Steph did it. Giannis did it. LeBron did it. Like, that's just to get to the top of the mountain, that's the final test. So if you're telling me that Tatum throughout the entire playoffs is going to have a 60% true shooting percentage, that probably tells me he's averaging close to 30 a night and he's making three, four threes a game. If he's doing that, the Celtics can't lose. They just – because you have to focus so much attention on a guy with a 60 true shooting percentage. Now now aggressive Derek White is getting his. Now, you know, I, so I think Tatum, at the end of the day, things still end with your best player. So if I can pray to this genie that he does <laughs> pull up a, a 7 for 24, 1 for 10 from 3, uh, I think I would go with that. Spirit, I it's impossible to pick, but I, I think I would go with KP uh, post ups, just because it is like such a new weapon. It's a dimension for the Celtics. I, I actually I was gonna take Tatum, but Greeny already took it, so this is <laughs> this is my number sure. two. Yeah, I was weapon. debating between him and Horford because if Horford's making his threes, it's <laughs> yeah, all, dude, oh, I was debating like, between yeah. KP and Horford too. So, um. I, I, but it, that's a dimension of the Celtics offense that hasn't existed in the previous, like, I don't want to even call them playoff failings other than really last year because they've been ahead of schedule for so Agreed. long. People think they're failings, but they're really not. Uh, it's just a young team learning how to win. But I especially think late in games, that is something we can go to that teams just don't really have an answer. Like, how do you guard a seven foot three dude who's scoring one, you know, an offensive rating of 124 on post-ups. Mm -hmm. And it's not like a post-up is some complicated offense. You have to run to like get him in the right spot. Like he can just kind of come off a screen, stick his ass out there and catch the ball. And all of a sudden you have 124 offensive rating. So I think that's a weapon late in games. We could go to, if we can guarantee he's going to continue that efficiency that just it's a dimension that hasn't existed in previous Celtics teams. So I think I'd probably go with that one. Um, I just think Spo's gonna take that's gonna be the thing Spo takes away. I think, I think he's gonna track it every time. Double he's gonna say, yep. you're gonna have to beat me with threes, and I'm gonna yep. take my chances. Yep. Yeah, well that, you saw what they did against the Sixers. Like they went to that zone and it was like they had three guys just around MB. They 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 could not get the ball to him. I do think the Celtics are just overall so, like the IQ on the Celtics across the board plus the passing ability is completely different. Like they just don't have good passes on the sixes. Like Nick Batum's their best passer. I'm pretty sure. Like right. you got Kelly Oubre and Tobias Harris trying to fucking throw entry passes and they just can't do it. Like KP is really good at going up high and getting that, that pass mm -hmm. at the top. And then just, I mean, he had that controlled tip in that thunder game. Where, one yeah. Right to, to D yeah. white. Mm -hmm. And so I think that like you throw it up there and he catches it and he's, he's, able to make those easy passes. I do think you're right though. Spo's gonna play that play that game and we're just gonna have to have to knock those shots down. I mean, you're open threes. That's it. Yeah. But yeah, I, I I'm I'm torn between Tatum, like you cause like and just statistically, right? He's gonna have your, your highest usage. Yeah, Muzz in the chat here said the same thing. Like just give me the guy with the highest usage with the with the good efficiency. But I think KP, like he's had he's has limited playoff experience. He's played in about 10 playoff playoff games. The first Wild. The first Mavs series, he was really good. Second one, not so good. Um, and that was, I know, felt like kind of a Mavs implosion type thing. And he's just a different player at this point. I was going to say, it's, I feel yeah. like it's, it's tough because like mentally he's he's more mature. His yeah. game is more developed. So that's, but again, like that's what makes it so tough is like we're going off something that's like a new version that hasn't A, been in a playoff series and B, been in a playoff series where the expectation is you win the freaking title, right? Like you're not a, Hey, if we could just break through the nah, second round, no that'd be deal. great. It's like, he needs to deliver on the highest of stakes and he just hasn't had to do it yet. doesn't mean he can't. It just means he hasn't yet. Yeah. I, I think I would probably lean the, the KP. If he can go 1.24 on points per possession, because I think they're going to raise the volume of how much they're going to that as well. Like, mm -hmm. They didn't, they didn't, they barely used it in the fourth quarter in the clutch this year, which is either just bad coaching or because or they reason. don't, or yeah. they don't want to. And yeah. I mean, uh, if, I'm sure you watched the part of my take interview with Joe Mazzulla. Uh, I've never felt better about Joe Mazzulla going in Fucking to love anything. That, Dude, psychotic. Is the best. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. He's awesome. So like, I'm a believer, like we talked about it. The JJ Reddick pod did like an, like an old man in the three thing. And like, they basically discussed like, that exact thing and like how it's very odd that 
they haven't gone to it. And JJ was kind of just like smirking, being like, I'm pretty sure they know that's something they should be going to, the D White KP pick and roll. Yeah, didn't they said they ran yeah. it like nine yes. times all year or something like that. Some yeah. I heard that and I was like, Yeah. So I thought the same thing. I'm like, wait a second. I'm like, nobody is seeing what we're seeing, that this yeah. is literally an unstoppable set. So, yeah. so it's either it's either we're all they're all just lose their minds in the fourth quarter and they forget to do it, which I guess is technically possible, or they all see the numbers and they also have eyes. And they're going to go to it more in the fourth quarter. Um, all right. So I guess last question, and then we will, we will pick the rest of the playoff series. But is there a result that you can live with that is not – like if we don't win the title, can you live with – like if we lose to the Nuggets in seven games or six games and Jokic is just like, okay, he's a top 10 player of all time and the Celtics played well, but it was like there's nothing you can do about it. Because for me, that's the only result I can kind of probably walk away from the playoffs being like, that's that's okay. That's life. No. <laughs> I mean, I just look at it. I just look at it through the lens of NBA history. Every single team in the history of the NBA who has done what the Celtics have done this season has gone on to win the title. Your ex- I don't care who you play. Your expectation is is you should win the title. You have, <laughs> yeah, the best, you have the fourth or fifth best point differential ever. Every team ahead of you and after you won the title, right? You you crossed over and passed the 72 bucks. So every team that has an at least an 11.36, whatever the Celtics have, you do that for point differential, you've won the title. Every team that has a plus you know, 15 home differential has won the title. You have the best offense of all time. You have the best net rating of all time. Like, <laughs> I think it's okay to be like, if they don't win the title, it's it's not only a failure, it's arguably the biggest choke job in the history of the NBA because you will be the <laughs> only team in NBA history who has not won the title after doing what they've done. It's that's what's that's like literally what's at stake. You're either cemented as one of the greatest teams of all time. Or you're cemented as the greatest choke of all time. It's like we've <laughs> never had even the even the the Garnett big three didn't have that weight of possibilities, right? But like given what they've done all year, no loss would be justifiable. Even if it's to Jokic in game seven on a half court heave. I just <laughs> not accept come it. on, Greeny. I can't, I can't do it. it, it I just want them to be just normal <laughs> and like everybody else in the history of the league. Just be normal, please. That's it. I don't want special treatment. I don't need them <laughs> to overachieve. Like, just do what every single team has done and they'll be fine. Uh, yeah, I don't know how I follow that, but <laughs> I will say that. <laughs> I mean, I, so, like, rationally, I want to be like, yeah, if they lost in 70 Jokic, I'd be okay. I wouldn't be okay, dude. Like, even <laughs> last year, I was like – there's a way we could like be okay with this if we don't win the title this year. Greedy's right. Like they got to fucking win this season. They're so awesome. And like, okay, Tatum Brown, like they're only going to keep getting better. They're not super old. Like we got KP injury luck this year. Yeah. Drew holiday is going to be 34 next year. Al yeah. Horford's going to be 38. Like there's not be a better clock. again. Yeah. There's not a <laughs> clock on the core guys, but there is a clock on like the, the, tertiary guys who are super important to how fucking awesome this team was so like nothing is guaranteed this feels like the year it's gonna be the damn year they're <laughs> winning the title fuck and seven games it, fuck Jokic. beat him in five <laughs> like like jake how you're feeling is how i probably would say i felt in 2022 right because they finally broke through you lost to an all-time player in steph curry you know it was your first time there but at least you had broken through well, now that they have made a finals, it's like making the finals is no longer the goal. Like that's for yeah. that's for the Sixers fan. That's for the other fan <laughs> to, to dream about, right? Like now that they've checked that box, it's time to to check the final one because it's the only thing left. Uh, man, like <laughs> please, I, I I think I'm just I'm just protecting myself and like building like that in my head. It's like okay, if this Celtics team, that's if our our destiny is to just be really awesome part of this era, but we just lose to top ten players in the finals every time, uh, that's just <laughs> the destiny. I mean, listen, I, this team has caused me a lot of pain in my life. Same, I, dude. I do not yeah. think 
I will. I cannot imagine the pain that this will cause me. <laughs> are we Clyde Drexler? Is that what we are? I, I, We're Clyde that's what Drexler. I'm <laughs> I mean, well, that's shit. You want to get crazy? Like, think of what this means for Tane if he wins a Finals MVP. Yeah, dude. Oh yeah. Like, think of the legacy type discussions that are in the balance with this playoff run. Like that. That's a whole other side of the coin where it's like. For the rest of our lives, nobody can tell me anything. When it comes to Jason Tatum, <laughs> yeah. he the title by 26. The trolls are done. You know, like, that's it. I am bulletproof for the rest <laughs> of eternity if they just went, like, do it for me and my online persona. That's please. right. Like, that's all I care about. Like, Tatum <laughs> going 39 and 5 on 62% yeah. true shooting in oh. a six game finals win, dude. It's over. Please. The conversation's yeah. done. Please. <laughs> I know. I, I like you, you talk about all the net rating stuff, like and like. I guess this is just like if they go and do it, then you're right. Then they are one of the best teams of all time. It's just like I'm not sure. Like I, as good as the, all the numbers are, and as, like they, were just, I had one of the time of my life. That's why I almost didn't want the playoffs to start because like just <laughs> winning eighty percent of your games is just fantastic and stress free W's. It's it's a good time, but like I'm not sure. I do I can I put them mentally in the same category as like the KD Warriors, but it's like. Yeah, maybe maybe they are. Maybe maybe if they go through and do it, then then I, I hope they own me. Please own me. Please and, own me. <laughs> <laughs> please please own me. All right. Before before we get out of here, we'll just like we'll, I just wanted because we, we hadn't had a chance to really pick this series yet because the playing tournament's awesome. But like this is why we kind of had to wait till today to do these podcasts is because because like we didn't fucking know who the Celtics were playing until a day before they actually play the series, which um. When you add that to the fact that Celtics stopped really trying in March, it feels like we have like known what to, to expect for. It. We've just been playing the seedings game for twelve hours every day. Um, we're gonna we have some of the results already here, um, but I'll throw quickly to you, Spoony. Cavs Magic Magic go down 0-1 today, and kind of important like that in theory will be the series that we see next round. Um, I picked the Magic, not feeling great about that uh, after Game One, but we know not to overreact to Game One. Yeah, I, I think I picked Magic in seven. I mean, this is a toss-up series to me. I don't really think either of these teams are great. I do think Donovan Mitchell's the best offensive player in the series, and that might be what it comes down to, period, because they're both great defensive teams and both struggle to score. So I think I'd probably still stick with Magic in seven because they couldn't get anything to go today, and they kind of hung tight for a little bit. So I don't know. This this is probably the biggest toss-up series to me, period. Um Except maybe the next one that I see on the run sheet, but I'll stick with Magic in seven just because that's what I went with. Oh, I, I think Cavs in six. I just think it's a year yeah. early for Fair. Their sure. Magic. Fair. I think this is we talked about it a little before. This is their classic growing pains type playoff run. I think you know they just don't have the offense. I think playoff Donovan Mitchell is a clear playoff riser. Um, he's just he's just lethal. I think they're healthy, and you know I. I think that they're motivated by given what happened last year. They have the look of a team that's like, okay, you know, we're not a first round out this year. We may not go further than that, obviously, because, you know, they'd be playing the Celtics in round two. <laughs> but it feels to me like, you know, you're going to get one last goodbye Donovan Mitchell series before he heads to South Beach uh, later this summer. And, and that'll be that. Yeah, I, I I definitely want to flip my pick after watching yeah, Game 1 too. today. That, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, Donovan Mitchell is clearly the best player in that series. I know Paolo was really good this year. But yeah, they the offense, they looked really young, deer in headlights vibes. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm going to pivot away from that one, Spoonie. But Nick Sixes, just because we just watched that one. I picked the Sixes before today. I still feel okay about the Sixes after today. Like I, I've been saying that Nick's just just tick all the boxes of a regular season team to me. The problem is that they, the, the matchup wise, the offensive rebounding, which is like, it's such a Knicks thing. And they just destroyed mm. them on the boards today. The Sixers just don't rebound. And beach is not a good rebounder, even though he puts up like 11 rebounds a game. Plus it looked mm. like he, I don't know how you live your life as a Sixers fan. Cause he looked awesome. And then he does like one of the most incredible plays I've seen in my yeah, life. It looks, like, yeah. it looks like he literally, his knee was going to, like have to be taken to like amputated in the back and then he comes back and then he's still like really good and they almost pull it out. But, and Brunson, Hey, he's the only real creator on that team. I'm going to stick with my original pick with the sixes. I, even though I don't know, maybe Embiid just might be a, a mystery yeah, meet by I, the end of the season. I think their whole matchup obviously has an asterisk because you just, you have to wait. Like if he, if his knee is swollen up after this game, then it's a wrap for them. And I think, 
them losing today, I think, was their their missed opportunity to win the series, right? You got the off night shooting from Brunson. You got killed by late Josh Hart threes. Oh man! You know, like those are just those are the swing role player moments at home that shape a series. And I think had they been able to go on the road and steal, I mean, and listen, if they coming back win game two, everything I'm saying is irrelevant. But I think the first game is always the easiest game to steal. Right. So I think now that they they came up short, couldn't get a defensive rebound to save their life. Like that's not going to change anytime soon. Um, so I think barring injury, I'd say Nixon six. Yeah, I my original pick was Nixon seven just because Embiid, I didn't think he was going to be healthy. He very much did not look healthy after he tweaked his knee. So, um, yeah, I'm sticking with Nixon seven. I just don't I, I'm with you, Jay. I think we've talked about this a lot on the podcast. We're both like we think the Knicks are try hard regular season team. <laughs> Their half court offense stinks compared. You know, they get a lot of buckets in transition, but. You know, the defensive rebounding against the Sixers, or the offensive rebounding, rather, translated against the Sixers. So we'll see. But I think the Sixers are good for it. But I don't know how many Kyle Lowry games you get like hey. that out of this series. But Thank God man, he's he, on the hate. Yeah, I know, dude. Speaking <laughs> so of playoff bad. risers, man, that dude's a fucking yeah. winner. Uh, but I'm sticking Knicks in seven. Yeah. All right. Uh, Pacers, Bucks, another hard one to pick. Uh, I'm, 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 just, I'm just sticking with the Bucks. I just, for some reason, I just think all the guys are coming back. Uh, that's, again, probably me protecting myself from getting my hopes up and being like, Embiid's injured, Jimmy Butler's out, and Giannis is out. So I'm just thinking Giannis is going to come back in like game two, and if he plays, then they're going to win the series. Greeny? Uh, I'm going to say Go Bucks. Ahead. I'm going to say Bucks in seven. I just, again, it's another team that is inexperienced. I know that they've destroyed them in their regular season matchup. I just think it's, it's a different beast, and I'm I'm weary of everybody all of a sudden thinking this is like an easy yeah. Pacers series. It's exactly. never it never plays out that way. You know, they also can't stop, you know, they can't get a defensive stop to save their life. And I think if the Bucs can just find a way to play a lick of defense, next thing you know, Giannis is maybe back game four. Uh, I, I think if it if they can find a way to you know, at least win one of the first two or at least win one of the games in, you know, in Indy, I, I see it going seven. I, I, okay. So, you know, sometimes <laughs> there has to be a hero, someone willing to take a stand okay, step up and say, Viva la revolution Pacers in seven. <laughs> okay. Giannis is like, even if he comes back, like he's going to be hurt. They can run you up and down the court. The bucks want to play slow. The Pacers got to make their threes. I think they got four games where they make their threes and then bow out in the second round, like you can get swept. Yeah. But I, I, I mean, if Giannis was healthy, boom, you know, I would definitely say bucks and six or something like that, but they can steal a game or two before he's like totally back. And then, you know, you make some threes all of a sudden it's over. What happened? Halliburton celebrating. Giannis is crying. And this is total hope casting, as the kids say. <laughs> I just want this to happen, even though I don't think it's going to. So Pacers in seven. If you're going on vibes, it's the Pacers. The Bucs have just <laughs> yeah, exactly. been like such a disaster. Right, that's the thing. Like, yeah. There's this dark cloud over them, right? And I just think, I feel like their issues are more later round problems Agreed. than early round, right? So I just, I don't know. I respect... I respect their pedigree in a weird way. I don't know. Like I just, there's, it's just a different environment to when you've never been in it before and you're relying on guys. I mean, Siakam's obviously been there. He's won a ring, but I don't know. I just, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt until I see otherwise. Yeah, exactly. Like every, I, we, we do it every year. We forget how different the playoffs is. And then we watch the first day of the playoffs. I'm like, this is like a different sport. Like it's just yeah. completely different. Yeah. And, and also tell me, tell me what Halliburton I'm getting. Am I exactly. getting, yeah. am I getting November Halliburton or am I getting April Halliburton? Yep. That, that matters. April. Yep. Uh, West Suns Wolves. We saw game one today. Um, Wolves just stood up, man. Just hey, Wolves stood up. Fascinating. I, yeah. You know, at first I thought this was, this was a, a bad matchup for them, right? They Same. got killed during the regular season. Anthony Edwards might be a playoff riser. And if he's a playoff riser, then today was not an accident. I think it changes the dynamic of the series. I probably would have said, you know, Wolves, or I probably would have said Suns in seven, but I think I might go Wolves in six after what we saw today. 
th- this is classic ant he does this dude he's goes insanely hot and then he comes out of nowhere and has like a complete dump in his pants the next game <laughs> so he might have a good get like maybe he's just a playoff riser and keep it going but like ant is so up and down and he's what he's like 22 that's yeah. what happens when you have a 22 year old superstar but i think i picked wolves in seven i think i'd probably stick with that their defense sure. is legitimate mm-hmm. they have playmaking like I, I mean, I don't know if Cat's supposed to be back at some point. So he was he was good today. Oh, yeah, he he played today. I, this is the game I missed. I did say that <laughs> off the rip. This is the game I completely missed. Okay, never mind. Sorry. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Wolves and seven in that definitely in that case. Another vibes pick, and it's like, the, if you've gone off vibes, the Wolves have had a great year, and the Suns have just like they just snuck in, even mm-hmm. though they had those three wins against the Wolves. I'm flipping to Wolves. I loved what I saw today. Um. I think Book is going to and Beal are going to really struggle in this matchup. Like the Wolves yeah. defense is like well, they, they're they're the ma- they have the prototype of the same type of you know when you think of who the Celtics struggle against, it's can you defend the wings? Can yeah. you make your threes? Do you have a, a a good point guard who won't turn the ball over? Right, and you have a guy in Ant that can take over and be the best player on any given night. So you know they have the formula. I mean, it was them and the Celtics that didn't lose three games all year. I think they were the only two teams in the NBA all season. So I think they have that formula. It's just, is their best player ready to take the jump? Just like we've always were worried yep. about young Tatum. Like if yep. he if if he's ready to take the leap that Tatum made, then the Wolves will will make a deep run. This to me for Ant is Tatum's bubble run and where he like he took them to the conference finals. And like Tatum was a year younger that year, but mm-hmm. this is I guess Basically the same. Yeah. All right. Uh, don't tell me the score of the Lakers Nuggets because I have avoided it so far. But yeah. um, I'm I'm just taking Nuggets. I don't know, care what's happening in in game one. I I think I saw a comment in the chat earlier that the, the Lakers were doing well here. But um, give me the give me the Nuggets in whatever. But give me the Nuggets, Greeny. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be a sweep. I'll give them. I'd say Nuggets in six. I just think their games were close all last year. Um, so, you know, it's not something where, you know, I can't, I know what I can see the score right now. It's actually, you know, it's, okay. it's, it's, it's recovered a little bit. Um, but I just think like, you know, they're the champs until someone knocks them off. You got to give them, you know, the respect. I just think it will not be as easy of a series or, I mean, as quick of a series, just cause you know, you almost never see sweet. I feel like People think everything is going to be a sweep and nothing is ever Never a sweep. A sweep. Yeah. Yeah. We talk okay. about that a lot as like sweeps are actually rare. Yeah. One of the closer uh, for, uh, sweeps ever, I think, with the Lakers mm-hmm. Nuggets last year in the conference finals, pretty similar to us against the Nets in 2022. So, yeah, I got Nuggets in six. Like Jokic is going to do Jokic things. They're a better team, but I, I think the Lakers will definitely get a couple. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, you're never going to get me to ever root for a league. I mean, I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, the Celt- yeah. Shocking, the Celtics podcast picked the Nuggets. I'm, I mean, e- even though everyone's trying to talk themselves into the Lakers, maybe having a shot here, um, I, I, Jokic is just that ridiculous. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. I just said they'd win the game, and I want to go yeah. take a shower. It's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um. Yes, uh, uh, Mavs Clippers, another weird one with the injuries. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is it's quietly kind of broken nicely, not to get really way too far ahead of ourselves, but Nuggets playing the Lakers and then maybe the Wolves and then like whoever comes out as opposed to being that one seed where they would have got an easier first round matchup. Um, but yeah, Mavs against a Kawhi, no one seems to know. I, I just don't think he's going to be able to make it through a series for me. Like, this is just a, a health pick. And I think Luca is, and that team's just better. Then in years previous, when they the Clippers actually won those series, Luke is better. The team's better. Kyrie's on his best behavior. Mm-hmm. I think the Mavs are going to take that Clippers series. It's pretty. Yeah, um, I, I just it, it pains me to root for Kyrie or think Kyrie's going to win. <laughs> but I, I think I'm with you, dude. I think the, the Kawhi stuff. Like, who the hell knows, man? He's got a different injury every other day. <laughs> Um, I do think if you could guarantee me Kawhi, Paul George were going to be fully healthy and Harden were going to be fully healthy for that entire series, I'd probably take clips in seven. Mm -hmm. But who knows? I think the Mavs floor is a lot higher than the Clippers. I think the Clippers have a higher ceiling, but I just don't trust them to hit that ceiling on Mm -hmm. a game to game basis. So I think the Mavs feel like a classic second round out to me. So I'd Mm -hmm. say Mavs in six, maybe. Yeah, I was... I'll say this. This is 
the no more excuses Lucas playoff series, right? Like yeah, this yeah. is it. It's year what five, six for him. He's being talked about as MVP. You can't lose in the first round. You can't lose in the second round. Like at some point, he has to be held to the standard that everyone holds Jason Tatum to as one of the best young players in the league. So, uh, uh, you know, I don't love hearing that Kawhi's getting mystery knee injections like yeah. the day before their game. Like <laughs> no. that's not great. So if he comes back and is ninety percent Kawhi, I would I would probably say Dallas in seven. If he's if he's hurt and isn't the same guy, I'd pick Mavs in six, just because I think they solved their big man issue. You know, they got Kawhi, you know, playing with you know his head on straight. Luca is, I mean, it's undeniable what his production is in the season that he's had. And I just think you know if they can get their bench shooters, and, and I just feel like they are ready. You know, they've gotten killed by the Clippers in what both of their previous yeah. matchups. This is another one of those, like, can they beat their boogeyman series? Like this is the moment where Luca needs to establish himself as, you know, one of the best players in the league. He can get over his, his playoff demons to do that. I think they win pretty decisively, especially if Kawhi's not, you know, ready to go. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Luca, it's, it's time, man. It's all, it's all fun and games until you start getting knocked out when before. Well, listen, everyone to. wants to tell me all these people are better than Jason Tatum. Yeah, well, it's time for them to prove it and actually exactly. preach, preach, brother. Yeah. Exactly right, dude. Yeah, and you know, Jack- like Jalen Brunson, you went seven to twenty-four today. You're like, all right, well, if Tatum goes seven to twenty-four tomorrow, I don't want to hear it. Yeah, yeah. He won't be going seven for twenty-four tomorrow. I actually just got a pit in my stomach thinking about the playoffs starting tomorrow. Um, that's <laughs> no, dude, it's just it's terrifying. terrifying. Uh, Thunder pills. I mean, like. Th- the last week couldn't have gone better for anybody than the Thunder. Like the fact that the Nuggets end up on the other side of the bracket, yeah. Zion uh, goes down and they get the Pelicans without Zion, like as someone that could probably be a matchup problem with Chet. But like without him, I think I think this one actually could be a sweep, but four or five for, for the Thunder, Greeny. Yeah, I'd say I'd say five or six, you know, just because I do believe in the the Pelican wing defenders. I think sure. when they're when when Herb Jones is locked in and they're causing chaos um you know i think they can steal one or two just because again we're going to be dealing with a team that's never gone through this before right the, well actually both teams right so yeah. both teams are so so you know new to this environment i feel like you have the higher range of variance where you could tell me the thunder are going to be a machine and they're just gonna you know prove to be the team we saw all year sga is going to lead the way but you could also tell me cj mccollum is going to have 35 Brandon Ingram will show up and Herb Jones will shut down Jalen Williams. Like, I just think, you know, your gut says go with the team that was better all year, but this is one that it wouldn't shock me if the Thunder are the one or higher seed that loses their first round series or they could win it in, in four or five. I'm pretty Pell's brained. I like their team a lot for some reason. Like, I feel like Ingram's offense translates to the playoffs really well because he likes to work in the mid range and he's so friggin' big that it's almost like KP as a wing where he can just kind of get that mid range shot off mm-hmm. of anybody. But I-, I just think the Thunder are kind of a well oiled machine, one of the best half court teams in the NBA on both sides of the ball, too, which I think is really important. So, I, and they're I efficient. Love... They don't take a lot of threes, but they shoot, I think, like 38 or 39%. Yeah, the, yeah, as a team. yeah. the threes they take, they make, and SGA, he's going to do his thing. Like, I I wonder if you put Herb on him almost. Oh, I, sure. I don't know. Yeah, so. Uh, but, and, like, JV just has no place in this series to me That's at what all. worries so, me for them. Yeah, it's a bad. I, I feel like the Pels, with a different matchup, could have won their first-round series. I don't love this matchup for them, especially with Zion. That's what's it. It sucks they can't right go. Now. It sucks they can't go Zion at the five and mm-hmm. really yeah. just do some weird shit and see what yeah. happens. Yeah. So I, but I do think the Pels will, will snag a game or two. So I'll take yeah. OKC at six. There we go. Awesome. Well, Greeny, it's been a pleasure. Guys. Everybody in the chat, <laughs> this, this is it. That's no more, no more stress-free wins. No more playing the Wizards <laughs> or. Peyton Pritchard dominating for 35 minutes and dropping 35 points. Oh, he still might. He still might. I mean, hey, please, please own, again, own another person, please own me. I don't know, any, any closing thoughts, Greeny, you want to, you want to put out into the universe? (laughs) It has to be be this. It has to be the year. It just has to be. I just, everything we've seen, everywhere they, they've approached it, like 
at some point they need to be rewarded for going about and doing things the right way, right? Like at some sure. point you have to reward yeah. Brad Stevens for building this type of roster, right? Like things have just gone so well. It's either going to go and finish it off or we're going to be dealing with a classic, like something like beyond incomprehensible is going to happen and it'll be the end. Right. I just, oh, I can't man. wait. I just, I've been smiling for like all day. It's like a nervous coping mechanism. because like, <laughs> I, Every dribble is going to be terrifying. It's yep. just like, there's no better way to live, but it's also the worst way to live. Celtics in five. Celtics in five. Go. We're calling it. Let's go. Please, Celtics. Please. 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 That's all. It's all, we, it's all we have left. We're, we're going to do our best to be analytical as the playoffs go along, but it's really just going to come back to please, please, please. Yeah. please. I'm, I'm literally <laughs> on, on, our, on our knees, everybody in the chat, thank you for tuning in. We're all terrified. We're going to go through this together. It's going to be the year. Until next time, let's go Celtics. I love this!